All right. So uh, let's talk about that feeling we get after leg day, you know, that mm. satisfying soreness. Yeah. Yeah. That makes you think, wow, I really worked those muscles. Yeah. Well, that's the power of eccentric muscle contractions. And today we're doing a deep dive into the science behind them. What's so interesting is that even though eccentric contractions are something we do all the time, even just like walking around or sitting down, right? there's still a lot that we're uncovering about them like on a molecular level. Yeah, so we have a research review here from Walter Herzog that was published in the Journal of Applied Physiology back in 2014. Mm -hmm. And we're using that as our guide. Great. I'm excited to see what mysteries we unravel. but. First, how about we define what exactly an eccentric contraction is? Absolutely. So we tend to think of muscle contractions as, you know, shortening flexing. But with eccentric contractions, mm -hmm. the muscle is actually lengthening under tension. Okay. It's more like a controlled release yeah. than a powerful squeeze. Okay. So picture this. Yep. You're at the gym doing bicep curls. Lifting the dumbbell is a concentric contraction. Right. Your bicep is shortening to generate force, mm -hmm. holding it steady at the top. That's isometric. The muscle's activated, but it's not changing length. Exactly. But then as you slowly lower the dumbbell, yeah. that's the eccentric contraction. Uh -huh. Your bicep is lengthening, but it's still working hard to control that movement. Eccentric contractions generate more force Ridiculous. than concentric or isometric contractions. Huh? You can actually lower a much heavier weight than you can lift. Wow. But here's where it gets really interesting. This extra force has puzzled scientists for decades. The enhanced force we see with eccentric contractions can actually exceed the maximum force a muscle can generate isometrically. Well, Herzog proposes that a giant protein called Titan plays a key role. Titan. Yeah, picture Titan as this long, springy molecule that runs the length of the muscle fiber like a built-in bungee cord. Well, it's not just about Titan passively stretching. Herzog suggests that when a muscle is activated, Titan's behavior actually changes. What kind of changes are we talking about? First, calcium, which is essential for muscle activation, right. binds to Titan uh -huh. and makes it stiffer. There's also evidence that Titan might bind to another protein called actin, actin. during these contractions. Mm. It's as if you were to grab onto that bungee cord somewhere along its length while it's being stretched. It would change how much force is needed to keep stretching it, wouldn't it? During an eccentric contraction, it seems that only the stiffest part of Titan is actually being stretched. It's like having a multi-stage spring and eccentric contractions engage the strongest stage. And what's really remarkable is how this Titan mechanism can also address another puzzle about eccentric contractions, their energy efficiency. Wait, energy efficiency, you mean like how much fuel our muscles burn? Exactly. You see, we can lower a much heavier weight than we can lift. Right. Meaning we're generating more force, mm -hmm. but with less energy expenditure. Oh. And the classic muscle contraction model really struggled to explain that. So you're saying that Titan is not just making us stronger, yeah. but also helping us conserve energy. Exactly. It's pretty important, especially for athletes. So we're essentially adding Titan's force to the equation, which can push it beyond the limits of those cross bridges alone. Precisely. It's like Titan has this hidden reserve of strength that kicks in during eccentric movement. And this ties in with another interesting phenomenon called passive force enhancement. Think about that feeling you get the day after a workout where your muscles still feel slightly tense, even when you're relaxed. Yeah. That's passive force enhancement at work. So even when the muscle isn't actively contracting, it still has some residual tension. Exactly. Herzog suggests this is because Titan remains somewhat stretched even after the muscle relaxes. Oh. It's constantly working behind the scenes to provide passive support and resist overstretching. And this passive force enhancement is part of what makes eccentric training so effective for building strengths, right? You got eccentric contractions are essentially preloading Titan, huh. priming it to work even harder the next time the muscle is activated. Okay. They give your muscles a head start on those strength gains. Okay, let's get practical. I know we talked about athletes in rehab earlier. What are some specific examples of how understanding Titan could be beneficial? Well, for athletes incorporating exercises that emphasize eccentric movements, like plyometrics, yeah. could potentially improve explosive power and reduce the risk of injury. Okay. Think about a basketball player landing after a jump. Right. That landing is all about eccentric control. So knowing how to optimize those eccentric contractions could make a big difference in both performance and injury prevention. Exactly. What about the rehab side of things? 
Well, imagine physical therapists being able to design programs that specifically target Titan's properties to help patients recover from muscle injuries more effectively. Oh, wow. This knowledge could revolutionize how we approach rehab. So next time you're at the gym, or even just out for a stroll, Take a moment to appreciate the intricate molecular machinery that's making it all possible. I will. And if you're as captivated by Titan as we are, keep an eye out for new research in this exciting field. It's a journey of discovery that's just getting started. Until next time, happy exploring.